David Warner, player of the tournament, uh, 289 runs at an average of 48.16. Um, amazing, given going into this tournament, everyone was saying, no, 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 he's, he's done, he's, he's cooked his goose, he's ready to go, but not the case, he was superb tonight. Trent Bolt again with the ball, uh, though Mitchell, two for 18, some great numbers given the pressure situation he found himself in. Yeah, it was very good, um, Kane had to bring him back early um, to try and get that breakthrough and he got Davey out and it kind of gave us a glimmer of hope, um, I thought he was outstanding again, he, he showed intent, he ran in hard, um, he kind of exerted that what we were looking for in the field and and you just hope you were hoping that someone else was going to come with them and they just didn't with, with the ball tonight all right ian smith what does he think we're going to cross now to the hawks bay well it's been a bad weekend laura to be fair hasn't it we had so many hopes on friday night that the all blacks the black ferns and the black caps would deliver some gold for us but in the end, we've been quite comprehensively beaten on all three occasions. Uh, and this morning, no exception, really. Uh, you know, that was, a, that was a fair target. I mean, he set up, Kane Williamson set up uh, a record run chase. That for Australia to get that, they had to break a T20 record. Uh, so he, he, you know, we, did the, we did that bit. I think if you'd have said to Kane Williamson, asked him to get that total at the toss, he'd have said, yeah, that's fine, having to bat first. But we just didn't have it in the bowling department today, uh, Trent bowled aside, we looked uh, fairly passive and, and, and our direction was poor, particularly when the spinners were called upon. Uh, they bowled some, some pretty bad balls, uh, to be fair, and Mitch Marshes. Uh, the Mitch Marshes and the David Warners of the world, too good for that. Uh, they certainly were, and uh, were, and you know, you, you, there was a lot of talk leading into this uh, World Cup about David Warner. He's passed it, he's done. But players of that quality never lose it. They just have a, a bad patch every now and again. And, and he was always due a big, big score at a big moment. Yeah, he was, and they've got the confidence too that they bat really deep. I mean, you know, we saw the other day when you've got Wade coming in so deep, so deep down the order, and Stoinis, etc. They've got match winners. Uh, you know, a long way down. Um, we lost one um, through a silly act. We lost Conway. Um, and we didn't quite, uh, I think, have enough just to help Kane uh, maybe take it to 190. I, I'm not even sure that would have been enough. I, I, I really don't. You know, uh, the way that uh, Australia went about it, they, they seized the initiative. David Warner, uh, he's been a thorn in our side for, for donkey's years. The day that he retires, I think we should all send him something because, you know, on the big stage, he tends to, to rip our ration card more than most. And uh, it really... Uh, he, he does it out of ability, he does it out of skill and belief, etc. Uh, they they're just they were just too too good. I mean, I, I, I'm sitting here searching for reasons why, trying to break it down uh, and, and really you know pinpoint the mistakes that we made. But man, uh, it could have been worse if Hazelwood had a caught Kane early on in the piece. It could have been a lot worse. They, they were just too good today, and we have to acknowledge that. Gee, Smilly, it's tough work talking uh, positive about the Auss Aussies. Um, uh, but, mate, um, the whole campaign, uh, is what, what do you take out of the campaign? What positives can you take out of this before they move forward? Mitch, this was a really competitive uh, World Cup. Going into it, a lot of sides could have won it. Uh, we got to the last two. You know, so, therefore, it's a, a really, for me, a very successful campaign. Won't feel like it at the moment. Uh, because we, we're now into that situation where we expect more from our black caps. We expect victories. Uh, and to the players right now, as they sit in the dressing room mulling over this, this situation, it won't feel good either. But on reflection, uh, it was very good. You know, we discovered some players. Uh, you know, we, we confirmed, um, you know, the, some of the things that we knew about some players. Uh, you know, and, and then, of course, you know, our standards were very high. Uh, you know, the best fielding side in the competition. You know, we've got probably the best captain in the competition, uh, probably one of the best batsmen in the competition, and we've got support network along the way. But the support today just wasn't good enough. I, I, I look at that campaign and I think they got us to a World Cup final again. Uh, and that, to me, is never a failure. Smithy, uh, I guess one positive we can also take away is Australia only can hold on to this for a year because we then go to Australia to uh, play another T20 World Cup at the end of next year where we're going to take it off them. Um, so uh, that's one positive we can take out of it. But New Zealand as a whole, like you mentioned, there are some positives. We have found some, some players. But each player, I think, at different points has stood up through this tournament and that's really good to see as well. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, they've all taken responsibility at times, um, you know, to, to handle a big occasion uh, and to, to, to bat on through or to be uh, 
you know, good bowling, a, a good bowling unit. And we are a good bowling unit. But today we weren't that good a bowling unit. And the reason why is because you get a towering figure like Mishmash who can hit the ball a long way and they get a pest like Warner who can just continually uh, seize on opportunities. You're always under pressure. You make a mistake, you're going to go the distance. Uh, and, you know, the, if I look at the spinners, they bowled too many short balls. And then uh, they, as soon as they tried to pitch it up, they went downtown on them. So it was just too much power for us today. Um, that's still an area for me. Uh, the Sodi Santner type bracket. If we go to Australia, we, we've still got to work on that area of the game. I think, in terms of pace and in terms of our variations, there we're quite nicely situated for a year a year out. You know, we, we can develop. We can get Ferguson back in the mix. Uh, we can develop uh, Jamison's game to another level in this form of the game. You know, th that kind of thing uh, sort of looks after itself for me. It's a, still the spinning area, which is a concern when they're under assault and they couldn't answer it today. Ian Smith, I want to thank you so much for all your thoughts throughout this World Cup. We look forward to hearing you off the back of uh, the Black Caps Tour to India, a World Test Championship rematch, and hopefully um, we can take that out. Yeah, I look forward to watching the rest of the analysis from the guys on the couch, Laura. And I think it's fair to, you know, you should take one thing on board yourself, Laura. The pain will ease. The pain will ease. At some point, the pain will ease. You just might have to hold back there on, on the on the bigger boat or the beach house or, or whatever you had planned for that. Why are 1. you buying me one? You, had to share off. Okay. you just have to pull back a wee bit. Sorry. That's the, well. Thank you for those wonderful thoughts there, Smithy. I've, I've I've still got over. I've got to get over 2019 first. So this is just hand this one to the list. Um, this Smithy, uh, you're a legend. We do love you. Thank you so much. Go and enjoy another round of golf, eh? Heck, I will, actually. I will. I will. And I'll, I'll probably play well, too. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. We'll leave that there, I think. <laughs> It's getting too cheeky, too cheeky. Um, we are going to cross now to Dubai to chat to the Black Caps coach, Gary Stead. And Gary, look, congratulations, first of all. You brought us a lot of joy over this tournament. We've loved watching your team and the way they've conducted themselves. A tough loss today. Australia, just too good. Yeah, thanks, Laura. Um, yeah, Australia were too good tonight. They... Uh... Yeah, they got there reasonably comfortably in the end and um, I thought we had a score that was definitely uh, possible to, to defend out there. But, yeah, their big guns came out and Warner and Marsh were pretty pretty special tonight, I thought, in, in, the, in the biggest moment as well. But enormously proud of, of our guys again of getting as far as, as what we did. And I guess I, I look at it a little bit that when you make it to a final, I guess you earn the light, uh, earn the right for the glory, but you also earn that right for the disappointment. And, and the dressing room's certainly quiet and, and hurting at the moment. Uh, good day, Steady. Tough luck tonight, mate. Um, I know the boys will be hurting real bad, but on the whole, as uh, the campaign, you must be very proud of the guys like Daryl Mitchell, even guys like Nisham stepping up in certain parts with the ball and the bat. So, you know, you've, you've obviously got a lot of positives to take take from this tournament moving forward. Yeah, I think we have. Uh, I, I was just counting up. I think there's six guys that are, at, at their first sort of ICC white ball tournament here. So for us, in some ways, it's still a, a somewhat of a develop, developing side as well. So they'll learn from those experiences. And as you say, their manners, there's, there's different guys have contributed at different times throughout the tournament. And that, that's always nice to see. And I think that's what we always rely on. It's, it's never about one person. It's about, the, I guess, uh, many uh, contributing, and, and I think we did that over the tournament to get to where we did. Gary, I just mentioned to Ian Smith that the next T20 World Cup is only a year away, and this is great for the side going forward. You know, it's great Australia only get to hold on to it for a year as well, but um, <laughs> we, we, it's great signs for the future and for that tournament. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the harder wickets in Australia may even suit us a wee bit more as well. And we're probably more a little bit akin to those conditions than what we are here. But um, overall, we, we have to adapt to, to what's in front of us. And there's some very, very good T20 uh, teams around the world. And, and we're one of them. And that's something that we're really proud of. You absolutely are, and you did us proud uh, tonight. You head on now to India, though. It's very quick turnaround for you. Three T20s, two test matches. It's not much time to sit and dwell on what's happened tonight. No, no, we've got to dust ourselves off pretty quickly. We've got another international in three days' time, so we fly tomorrow to, to India and, and get settled in Jaipur, and then we've got one day before the next international, and 
uh, I guess for the staff, it's a little bit of a, a dual role now of the T20s being played and also preparing the test players for uh, their the test match that starts in about 10 days as well. So it's all going to happen pretty quickly now for us. So, um, yeah, not too much time to dwell, which is sometimes a good thing in, in when you have a loss like this. Gary, hard luck, but congratulations on all you and your team have achieved this tournament. Thanks, Laura. Appreciate the support. Right, so if you have just joined us, Australia have taken out this Men's T20 World Cup by eight wickets. Just too good tonight for New Zealand. The Kiwis, although not w without putting up a fight. I mean, they put numbers on the board. They had numbers to defend. Um, it was just, like we keep saying, Australia just dominated in the end. Yeah, I think Smithy said it. Uh, Steady said it as well. Just too powerful, too strong for us. We did a lot of good things. You're trying to sit here and think about what can we talk about, but sometimes you just got to give credit to the opposition. They played really, really well. Um, and yeah, Mitch Marsh, my boy for the Perth Scorchers, hopefully he's in that form for, for the Big Bash. We see a lot of people say, you know, how great uh, New Zealand are, the, you know, great intentions, the way they play, the way they play the game, the way they wear our jersey. And, and, and everyone seems to get on with the Kiwi boys, but that's a lot to do with the travelling T20 player these days, isn't it? Does it, does it, I heard Jimmy Neesham talk about it, that those big name players you want as your marshes and the likes, like you just referred to marshes as your mate from, from Perth, do they lose a bit of their, um, a bit of their wow factor because that now they become your teammates as well, even though they're not your teammates in this particular competition? Yeah, I think so. I think there's, you know, you, you rub shoulders and you play in the same teams as them and you just found out they're normal people. They're not, you know, even though they're superstars, they, they do exactly the same things as we do. Um, and yeah, it's just, you know, the, the guys that really, like I say, Mitch Marsh is my mate, it's because he's just down to earth. You know, there's no big egos about him. Um, and so, yeah, it is, it takes the edge off sometimes not seeing them as, as up there and, and pretty much equals because at the end of the day we just 11 cricketers ro rocking onto the cricket field playing against another 11 cricketers yeah. whether you've, you've done it for a long period of time or whether you're a superstar um, we're just going out there to do our best. Can go the other way sometimes though like you, you've played with them in your teams and you train with them all the time and you see what they can do um, so sometimes, like, going into a game, you'll, you'll be like, OK, normal, like, you'll go, OK, these are what I'm going to do, and, and you'll prepare for the worst because you've seen them at their absolute best, and sometimes that can throw you as well. His workload throughout this World Cup, or, or actually through this year, Kane Williamson has been huge, and then he goes straight away, plays over in India. There's a lot of pressure on, on a young man when you are, you know, the leading batsman, but also the captain. You've got a lot of moving parts that you've got to co constantly keep across. I suppose that's where your senior players, like your Tim Southies, who you always see in the field coming up helping, um, they're so crucial. Yeah, it must be tough. I find it hard and I'm just sometimes just a batter, you know, um, and I'm not playing as much cricket as him. So, yeah, I think for Kane to have... You know, he's a new dad. New, um, he's got you know other things that are going on in terms of captaincy. You know, we can't. He can't just go back to his hotel room, put his feet up, and play a bit of Call of Duty. You know, he's got to he's got to make sure that he's doing everything well for the team. He's he's putting the team first. He's going to media things, catching up with the coaches, all those things that people don't actually see what goes into being a captain. You only see Kane turning up, toss. And that's it. But there's a lot of background stuff that goes on that we don't usually see. They are playing in three T20s, two test matches, a World Test Championship rematch. I can't wait for that. Just quickly, India or New Zealand? Uh, India, sorry. Oh, Mitch, sorry. India or New Zealand? 2-1 India in those conditions. I that's sorry. not what I'm looking for. I'm very for. sorry. All of it, all of it will be live and exclusive for you on Sky Sport. Make sure you join us. Thank you for joining us throughout this T20 World Cup.